tool is a contested pick. Watt the Fox can play it. Aurelia not so much on Smitty's champion pool. So you could ban Aurelia first round Yasuo. Like Yasuo Jarvin as like your first round there. And that would be reasonably effective here. They're discussing, they're making sure they're banning the right thing. It will be Aurelia. Now H2K is the first pick Yasuo. Knowing it's contested, games become very different in best of threes when you realize what strats are and aren't working. And I would I would forgive first pick Yasuo, even though it, yeah. in 99% of games it wouldn't make sense. Well, you would have to pick the Yasuo into whatever mid lane SK Gaming Prime is going to pick. And yeah. you have to think, they saw that Yasuo coming from a right. mile away last time. Like, and they went for TF, which didn't do anything for him. Yeah, and even if Odwamna doesn't get Gragas, he can still get Lulu for himself, unless they pick Lulu Gragas and just put Lulu on support for Zaitan. Like, sure. It's just mind games going through between these two teams in the final game of the best of three to see who goes to Cologne and competes in the finals. Well, right now they're hovering the Gragas. It has been reasonable for Odwamna. He's played it every game yep. so far in this series. And he's locking it's it in. Now, which Gragas will we see? The one that succeeded, the one that didn't? SKP, exact same picks as they had in game one here. The Braum, three times in a row for Zaitan. Three times in a row being the first pick for uh, SK Gaming Prime, I believe. Yep. They get it every time it's open. Smitty has locked in Braum every single time. Kika's getting his second Jarvan. Jarvan going to red side every single game as the most sought after jungler, as interesting as that is. So H2K, Fabipin is a big Riven player, though I don't see why you'd pick it very early. I don't see why you'd pick any of these assassins early in the game. I feel like those aren't the proper hovers. Yeah, you wouldn't pick an assassin against somebody who has Braum. Though. Like, that's just a no-no. You pick an assassin against a team that has a Braum on it, you're just asking to get exhausted, you're asking to get your damage absorbed. There's just, it's not a good idea. So, okay, smart plays for H2K. I like Nami. It worked better than Thresh against Braum. Uh, it's a good, she's a good laner. I think she's second to Morgana, the, I think, best anti Braum bottom lane. Uh, just good long range poke. Uh, yes, you can shield her ulti, but it's still pretty effective. Trashy will switch to Elise. More playmaking early on for the guy. His Rengar didn't work in game one, hops off that hype train. Is this just a race to see who's going to pick up Yasuo first? Like, well, it's both... not because they, they went seven picks well, in without grabbing. That, that's the thing, though, is people are like, we're going to take all of our knockups. And if SK, Game, SK Gaming Prime don't take it now, they're never going to get it. Yeah. So. Well, they're also, well, they're also rushing contested picks, right? Like, yeah. the Corky is to try to push down Sharn then even farther. They said, well, your Kog'Maw got crushed when I was Ezreal. Your Corky was your fallback. I bet you don't know Ezreal. And they're like, we can crush your bottom lane here. Right? They've tried so hard to get Braum time and again. Man. This is, this is crazy. Oh. Nice. Okay, so they go for the top lane Lulu. And now you pretty much have to take... You have to 100% take the Yasuo here, just because even if you don't want to play it, you can't let SK Gaming Prime have it with this composition. Unless they feel like they can beat it. I mean, that's the real test. Uh. Is, again, Febivin yeah. plays Riven, who destroys the heck out of that's Yasuo. True. But if he picks the Riven right now, they'll just pick I mean, something else. Potentially, sure, right? It depends on the mind games there. Yeah. And, and yeah, that is that is one of the downsides of Blue's side. I know players love to talk about how first pick is so powerful, but the chance to last pick can matter a lot in the mind games as well when you think about counter picks and linchpin champions that are vital to a team composition. Now, H2K, that's it's not really so much a Yasuo team anymore. I mean, the Gragas is still there, but I think they can go back to things that they like. And I mean, I don't like the choice of going for Cog here. I do like Cognami, it's a great lane, and maybe just the fact that you have Nami instead of Thresh holds up the lane, because it wasn't that bad in game one. They were down, but they weren't crushed. They weren't dying under their turret. The change in Nami could be enough to say, no, we think this will float the lane. It is risky to go back to late game 80 carries, but it can work. Going back to TF, even more risky. Yeah, that's something that I've really shocked by right and now because the they get the Yasuo. I was saying it's pretty much a death sentence with this team composition. Lulu top, Jarvan in the jungle. You have Braum as a support. There's so much here to set up that Yasuo, which was just devastating last game, played into a Twisted Fate. Mm -hmm. They're going to try to just reverse that matchup and be like, yeah, I can beat you with Twisted Fate. I'm going to pick that knowing that you want that Yasuo. Yeah. It's really, really strange to me, but I can see the mentality behind it. Fabivan says, since we have a late game carry now instead of the Ezreal or the Corky, 
we're just going to go ahead and try to set up that bottom lane, try to make it just survive the laning phase, get to the late game, heal for him later with multiple stuns from Nami. We're going to have Displacement from Gragas, we're going to have stuns from the Twisted Fate, and we're also going to have Elise Cocoons. So they have Peel for the Kog'Maw, but it's not really protect the Kog'Maw composition. No. And there's tons of ways for them to get in on the Kog'Maw with Jarvan. Yep. So this is kind of a strange composition here for H2K for me, but I think SKP played it better. They were kind of handed things too. Yeah, they got to pick up a lot of important champions, and I think they still have, once again, a very incredible bot lane. The one interesting thing, actually, about this, I want to kind of focus on, on the Braum matchups here real quick, because there's a lot of interesting synergies with Braum. Uh, Lucian's a big one, because of the passive, the double shot, you can land your stun really easily. Ezreal's one for the same reason Lucian's good. Attack, Q, attack is three stacks, just the exact same as Lucian is. And so uh, Ezreal works, in again, the exact same way as Corky, one of the lowest base attack speeds in the game for AD carries, one of the lowest attack speeds per level in the game for AD carries. Actually, has a really hard time triggering the stun. Is actually not the best combo here for the two of them. Aside from the fact that you can Valkyrie in and he can follow you with Stand Behind Me, which is uh, temperamental, I feel. So, SKP not picking the best bot lane duo they can, but trying to deny champions and say, we have the only late early game AD carries that you know. Play Lake and Carry. And maybe they can bully out here on it. Well, Yarnan did play a lot of Kogma in the first two games of the season. Mm -hmm. Getting himself a 6.67 KDA, so he's, yeah. he's very good on that champion, but at the same time... But we've shown that SKP can beat it. Yeah, they beat it last time. I think SKP kind of won champion select, but that's not going to win them the game right off the bat. Nope. That's why we watched the game. Darn Anything right. can happen. Yeah. People can face check a bottom bush and this time die for it. I think both teams kind of learned their lesson on that. <laughs> yeah, and actually an early defense, early defensive ward on the tri brush there from We Will Failer. And let's see. Just battle lines drawn. These teams are very risk averse now in game three. H2K's route for a number one seed rests on winning this by and large. SKP's route for a number three seed. They must win here. Minions have spawned get themselves a better seed and possibly play one of the tiebreaker teams. Mm -hmm. Which is definitely the situation you want to be in. I mean, think about this, right? If H2K wins the tournament again, <laughs> their first seed and SKP becomes fourth seed for sure, and they would have to play in the semis, mm -hmm. which H2K just beat them. Yep. Right? And you figure, like, you look at that story and you're like, man, that would suck for SKP. It's been a pretty close season, though. Yeah. Series between these two. But you figure if you're lifetime 4-1 and one against them in the Challenger Series, do you really want that for a semifinal matchup? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. No, you don't. Yeah. So even though seeding is a weird thing to play for, sometimes wow. it really matters when you realize your opposite seed is freaking H2K gaming here. H2K, they were going more for the harassment than they were the minions. And that's kind of costing them right now. But it will pull into the turret. And it's actually a pretty good way that H2K just gets level 2 at the same time regardless. There's only so much damage being dealt there. Four CS. No, okay, never mind. These minions are dying really fast. Yeah. All right, level two will be first for SK Prime. How does H2K play around that? We will fail. They're trying to heal up here on as best as he can, but there's two. Yep. Comes out. A good back off. Don't really lose anything for it either. Yeah. Here's the thing. This wave got pushed so fast. It'll walk into the turret. Maybe they deny CS this way, but they will not get any harass that way. Yeah, they're gonna have to ward up. That's exactly what they go to do instead of harassing because Trashy's on that side of the jungle now. All right, both cast. Two of the three casters got denied there. Three CS lead for SK Prime. That ward isn't actually all the way tucked into the tri brush either. No. So they won't see the setup here from Trashy if he does come bottom. It basically looks to watch uh, Repel to Dragon Gangs. Ooh. I think you need to ward River. Um, as red side against Elise, because she can easily repel the dragon and dodge tri brush wards. And Kiarna just missed the cannon too. Oh, that's rough. I missed that one. I was talking about Elise. Yeah, no, that I'm is just... bad. Trashy wards for his friend, but actually Kickus is already on the top side right here. Evan does have his ward trinket available, though he could trinket top side. Kickus gonna flag toss, trinket to watch where Trashy might come from. Nowhere to be seen right now. Kickus actually looks at the top lane, and there's no wards here. Yeah. No wards but it's at all. pushed in. There's nothing to get. No way to get a gank off just yet. He's actually going to back off. And I like how both the junglers are going back and forth on these picks, saying, we're going to pick junglers where it really sucks if you try to counter jungle me and you run into me. 
There's a lot oh, of fighters. Wow. What a brush to recall in. Actually, perfect information for SK Prime. They know Trashy's back to base. They know he's nowhere to be seen. These guys can go rest, but look at that. Big damage on Ashiar, and then they know there's no juggler around. Exhaust comes on Ignite there as well. Heals come through. Uh, Ziz is very but low. Ziz is almost dead. Wheel of Failure takes plenty of damage there. Trading spells, Ignite, and Heal down. No flash for Hjarnan. No mana either for Ziz. More harassment potential here for Hjarnan. Nice damage for the Fox. And the, you saw right there why I like Nami. She's such. She's one of the best fighters of the sort of meta supports. She has a, a lot of persistent damage output. Mm. And you saw, like, she kind of carried that battle right there. A lot of prolonged damage, a lot of healing and sustain. She does very well in skirmishes. Yeah, the W's remarkably efficient. The Biven might get ganked here. They see Trashy off on the side. Good ward coverage by H2K. They've kept the bottom side covered, but that doesn't spot kick us. If Biven goes too far forward. Nope. And he's gone. Back to base. Big mile up top. Oh, Duomina is getting pushed around a little bit. He's not sacrificing in, or suffering in minions just yet. But he's still being forced back to the side. And the thing is, if SKP had better ward coverage, they could arbitrarily push the mid lane wave, show up with what the fuck, show up with Kickass, and just dive with Duomina. As long as they knew that they were going to be safe from Trashy's counter ganks. That's not the case right here, but anytime you've got a lane this bullied, I think you should look for the random roam play. Fabivin's just knocking Watt the Fox around right now. He, got, he was on the receiving end of this matchup last time and ended up winning it as Yasuo. Now he's going to try to win it as Twisted Fate. I'll see if he can do this. Kekis, early pink ward. Going to spot one. Hut! Hut! He can't go for it, though. He's being collapsed on. He's got an EQ, though. He can jump to Dragon Ball and be safe. There's the, there's the E. Oh. Then he's going to walk by it, and he's like, hey, remember this? Hey, I'll kill that ward. He, he didn't kill it, either. Both players lose trinkets. Kick us. Yeah, it's gonna get defended by Elise for now. Neither pink ward goes down, but he he wants it. He really does. And you want this? You will never get this. And there's a TP for Odwamna, so all that bullying did not pay off. Catalyst comes in, equal CS. Actually, an advantage in oh. CS for Odwamna. He gets this. Yay! <laughs> ah, freaks the entire LCS crowd. Slightly higher pitch, though. No. Oh. And less loud. Vivin. Oh, the flash what? knock up! What a move! But there's not enough damage coming through. Fabivin stays safe with his own flash. EQ flash from Jarvin, man. Yeah? And he called Wanda Fox. Spam R on this. I got this. That's a, that's a thing. It is a thing. It's a thing. Uh, I didn't know it was a thing. Oh, yeah. It's totally a thing. <laughs> Been playing Jarvin forever. You didn't know it was a thing? I, I don't know how far away from you, ac you actually have to get from the, uh, the flag. Like Basically, your body's in a state of I'm being pulled to my flag. And you just flash yourself, and your body says, yeah, you're going in the air. Does it pull you to the flag again? Uh, no, it works like body slam. You just ah, stop. So you're in a state of knocking people up for that yep. little bit of uh, collision time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Thank but, you. Yep. But much like Arkin shifting a uh, explosive cask, you just kind of stop moving afterwards. Mm. Or Arcane shifting a uh, Blitzcrank hook. Yep. Those are fun. Yep, it interrupts the movement, but you're still in the state of being stunned, or I am a human knockup tornado, I guess. Okay. Yeah. You can also do that with uh, Yasuo's EQ. Yes, you can. If you flash after you E and you hit your Q, you will spin still. Yeah. Hard to do. Don't recommend it unless you are very practiced on it. If you try but to looks do it, you'll, cool. just, you'll look silly if you mess it up. That's true. So. You know, I did a uh, Yasuo, or not Yasuo, a uh, Varus ult flash. I never tested it before, but I was like, I'll bet you this works, and it does. See, this stuff is just like trying to be a fire breather. It looks awesome if you can do it, but if you mess it up, <laughs> you look really bad. I was like, it's a ranked game. Never done this before. I bet you it works. It did. <laughs> Illusion did not dash away in time. I was very happy. Oh, gank coming down bottom. Watt the Fox looking for This is first good ult. for him. There's big Bidding damage available. Follow. He does have ulti. Yasuo ulti. Oh, nicely done right there. First blood comes through. No uh, ult was left for. Zaitan, but didn't matter. Summoner healed by Z's keeps him alive. But do they have control over Dragon? Seems like it's just a kill. No follow from Forbidden. He ends up getting the cooldown reduction for the Morello Nomicon first item. Okay. You don't want to go with Fiends. Gets an AD. Be 
he still doesn't use his ultimate, despite all the cooldown reduction he has. He's at 30% just from yeah. items and buffs right now, even higher with masteries. Misses almost the entire wave. Silly Febivan. Pretty late on the, uh, well, the fact that he didn't do it. Yep. Really late on the fact that he didn't use his ultimate. Not even to just see where the roam was. Yeah. Well, Ward's coming back down. Yeah. They see Kickus on the left side. Okay, want to control this. Yep, Kickus gets pinged out. They're going to stay safe. Right now, 300 gold to SK Prime. That roam brought them back into gold here. Otherwise, actually, it was a slightly losing laning phase. Something that H2K is pretty used to is getting gold leads just for the lane matchups. Up, up top, though, Odwamna, despite being bullied a lot when we were watching him, up in CS by about 11. That's the thing with Gragas. He's very good at last hitting, even from disadvantaged matchups. You can one-shot cast him into the Q very easily and just sustain up with the W. Things make it to turret, you can hit them with the W as well. Yep. He's got AoE wave clear with two abilities. He's really well suited to that role. The fact that Lulu and Smitty was pushing him in the entire time. Hey, three with the ultimate. Oh, yeah. Have you rolled it for CS? A couple times. Good. Depends on the champion, too. Yeah. I do it with Elise Sometimes. all the time. Sometimes with Orianna, you just gotta do it. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Out for CS is quirky like 80 times a game. Yeah, that's true. What? What the box just didn't stop the wi the no wind wind ball. But doesn't. Okay, good. He blocks the gold card. Kickus. No real reason. Ulti and no good follow up available. What the fox did have a tornado, but didn't want it. Yeah, Forbidden didn't have his flash either. So if Cataclysm had come down, they maybe could have followed yeah. it up. Yeah, but it's close to a turret is risky. It's very close, exactly. They're both melee, so you can figure he walks back a couple of steps. Udama wants to roam down, get spotted by a ward while doing so, but they want to make this play. Flash up for Wat to Fox. Kick is still babysitting. No flash for the Jarvan, though. Now, the bot lane matchup actually holding very close here. And then, honestly, he picked the Kogma. But with the Nami, he's holding up just fine. 87 to 88. Well done. Good choice. Yeah, basically, he's playing whack a mole with a don't die at the same time. Make it mm -hmm. to the late game. Play whack a mole for about 30 minutes, and you'll be good. Oh, so far, okay. H2K have brought the gold back to equal, despite a 600 gold first blood plus assist. Another roam coming down from Wat to Fox. Is he just going for the rates this time? Yeah. Knock up on a Zaitan. Ward sweeping fails for We Will Failer. SKP defend that with their bodies. Kickus gets spotted. They saw the Biven back. He does have his ultimate. He's able to make this fight. They have the ward coverage. Trashy's smite is down. He's actually going to finish. No, he's not going to finish recalling, but there's no easy way to steal this. The damage is coming through. The easy wave clear. Look at that. Red team picks up Dragon. Nicely done. And so far these series, we've seen the team that establishes objective control first keeps the objective control. Yeah. So HK could be able to break that that trend and get themselves into those finals, or SKP just going to continue the trend, make it all the way. Well, Smitty forced to ult himself. He's pretty much out of mana. Does have his teleport though, and he's going to back right on off of that one. Odwamna bullying the lane a little bit. Kickus waits on a ward. Not much to gain there. The pressure bot lane really not yet paying off very heavily. Pressure in the other lane though so has been paying off. The fact that that dragon was warded, not going to be able to close this. The fact that the dragon was warded from multiple angles, H2K saw that Kickus was in the vicinity, Wat the Fox was roaming, but Forbidden had to back, and also the fact that Trashy didn't have his smite and he wanted to back too. It was just bad timing. They didn't set up for it, they didn't set up for the time that SKP would want to do it. So H2K, they get the short end of the stick. And SKP, though, they are trying to kind of strengthen theirs, if that makes sense as a phrase here, because Kickus gets his Lizard Elder, buys a bunch of wards, wants to keep the map control up, keep the vision control up. And they're going to look good at a 1,000 gold lead. Smitty is back in, pushing around Odwamna. Now, the thing is, Odwamna has not backed for a while. He has to explosive cast to disengage. And he'll get away. Let his TP back in. But that could have been the outplay for the kill. Like, imagine if Smitty flashes that barrel. Oh, yeah. Damn. <laughs> get didn't I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that. He would get this flash out of Odwamna, because I don't know how many... Uh, I don't think he had any damage spells still available to him. No, but just maybe, just maybe you catch back up. Either way, not yeah. going to be the case. 120 to 112. Rod of Age is done. Ooh, Boots there invade. for Odwamna as well. Here's the first real jungle invade of the game. SKP want this one. They are in vision of a ward, and actually they're going to get collapsed oh, up pretty yes, soon. Febivin steals it away with the wild cards. Nicely done. Wild card! You never know Seriously. what it's gonna do for you. Sometimes it steals uh, <laughs> your own blue buff. <laughs> your own blue buff for you. I guess secures at that point. Yeah. 
But Febovin gonna make his way down towards the bottom side. Does he want to go for the ulti roam? He's like very far across. Hides in a pink ward. Uh, they dare you to play aggressively. Oh, what wow. The oh, oh, he saw him. Yep. That was, that could have been real dangerous. Cut off the roam, but at the same time, didn't get anything for it. Just sat in a bush for a little bit. Yes. Hey, Go ahead. May have actually given up some turret damage here, because now it's all pushed up to him. Yeah, a little bit. He's going to miss about two melees here. Also, oh, bottom lane outer man. taking a lot of damage as well. Here on that, starting to lose health on top of this one. TF still held in the mid lane. And look at that. There's the two of them. H2K. They're too hurt to wait around, even though TF could ult, even though Trash is on that side of the map. They respect the dive power of, of uh, SKP. So instead, they go top lane. He's going to defend Smitty there. There's the stun on Pippin, actually. Sorry, going in for this one. He's in very much the wrong spot. Great explosive cask, easy gold card. Kill picked up by Febivin for a bottom turret. I was about to say that Febivin, or Febivin hasn't been using his ultimate pretty much all game. I think that's the first one we've seen out of him. Yeah. SKP pressuring every lane though, right? They went, it's so weird to look at, at who's winning a lane because minions don't always tell the story. Levels don't always tell the story, but turret pressure certainly does. H2K had to walk away from the lane and in a straight two on two, Turret kill goes down. Febivin says, okay, well, Bot got pressured. I'll go top. And in a straight one on one, the jungler shows up and Kickus knocks down the mid lane turret. Yeah, he abandoned a trashy back previously. And that was one of the things that I was talking about when Febivin was trying to hold the mid. It's like, well, when you rotate out as Twisted Fate, either you're going into a gank with your jungler or you're having your jungler hold the mid because you're going to lose it. Mm hmm. And that turret started going down. So, SK Prime, two turrets to one. They've got the only dragon on the map as well, which is respawning in two minutes. And they hold a 1,400 gold lead. SKP continuing to press whatever advantages they can. Triforce done on Corky before it's done on Kog'Maw. That is pretty big. It's really big there. Kog'Maw, he needs to keep in tow so that when they hit those late game Ooh, power spikes, he's just getting shredded. Inner track here for SKP. They're going to get the turret for free. Yeah. They dared H2K to defend that turret. It was just Watt the Fox hitting it, but the rest hiding in the brush with no words to spot them. And now three out of turrets gone. Pepevin oh. did knock that one down. Flash so Mini's going around. There's the ghost. Cataclysm still available. Yeah. As well as Flash, but he just gets the summoner spell and he's not going to be greedy about it. Yeah. I think it's the right choice because they let his ghost go down and they could trade flashes plus Cataclysm or just leave both up. Mm -hmm. Well, they see Watta Fox. It's going to be hard. Wind wall is available. Going to wind wall and dash through. He's going to oh. take his time. Flashes the wall, but there's the rest of the team. And down he goes. Nicely played on this one. And now Zs though, wants Trashy. He has nowhere to go. Zaitan joins the fray as well. There goes Elise with nowhere to walk. There's the trade kill. Nicely capitalized by SKP. That was really the only place he could go. And... Flash oh! gets three! H2K's got to be real careful on this one. Nice knockout from Lulu as well. Two kills. Make that three kills. Beautiful fight, SK Prime. I don't even think being careful is going to help you in that situation. Just completely locked up there. Smitty, part of that fight, Odwama was still top, still roaming down. Has his teleport. Not yet. Wow. He's almost up. So close. This was great. He waits for it, throws it over. The bubble actually, I think, hits the wind wall. It doesn't go over. Yeah. Trashy flashed instead of repelling it so that he could get the damage off faster. So he doesn't have his flash to get back over. And for Bivin, they just decide, no, we have to run from this. They just don't have the power. They don't have the mana. Great play here from Kikis. The capitalization play style. Flash Kata onto three members. And it kind of just sucks in Twisted Fate at the last second. And they just play cleanup duty at the very end. Phenomenal team fighting there from SKP. It's going to give him the dragon right as it respawns as well. Convenient timing, but great all the same. SK Prime now up 5,000 gold. Oh! oh! The prediction bubble. That was sick. Kickus really not in the right spot. That was all kinds of amazing by We Will Fail It. It's all kind of strange, too. He was like in the trees for a couple of seconds. I can't go anywhere, and he's dead. Then he gets knocked into the turret. So he's that basically. Was so amazing. He, he was stunned by displacement effects for so long. That was so cool. <laughs> Wow! And I was, I was giving him a little bit of crap in game one. I was like, we will fail her, you know, new guy to the bot lane, but they lost in game it one. It actually looks like it's off to the left, but boom. And then it knocks him kind of off to the right because it's the corner. Cocoon doesn't hit, but then he gets displaced by the barrel, but it just stuns him because it knocks him into the turret from the angle. Jeez. He just got shafted by angles there. Geometry. Geometry. <laughs> For more than just Velkaz. What a...
Man, I'm I'm just I'm just gonna fanboy a little bit longer. That was awesome. Well, two kill lead still for SK Prime. Mid lane outer turret did go down, bringing it back to a 3.8 thousand gold lead. Shrana will get himself a red buff just now. Finish his Triforce, but Z's already has a BF sword for himself. Is Twisted Fate gonna have a hundred percent lose rate today for uh, the Challenger series? It's a chance. Cause Man, the just picks have not been working out when these teams face each other. A lot of it's the warding, a lot of it's the roaming from mid. But that he is he is two one and zero. But it's much like yeah. uh, Kikis is Rangar. It's like, yeah. yeah, he was four two and two. But uh, I mean, you only ever got six kills. Right, you're supposed to pick off so much more than that. You're opportunistic. It's hard to to die if you only pick fights once in a while and you play safe the rest of the time. But how much are you really getting when What the Fox is going all over the place, making arguably better plays? And of course, you're not seeing the the, the turret totals in that scoreboard there. He's basically caused all three turrets that have gone down to go down. Ooh, a BF sword for Z's over Hyarnan. Looking for the gank here from Fabivant. Where's he going? He's going mid. It's a little far, though. Doesn't have a card yet. Can't make it over. He left the top lane, so now Watta Fox is all by himself against this turret. Yeah, they, they tried to go for the gamble. They said, can we make the big play while this top lane gets pushed down? It's a guaranteed five on four, and they couldn't quite catch it. It's the right mentality, though, because you have to start this fight before yeah. all of SKP group up. Because like I've been saying, this series, the team fight composition is the one that keeps winning. The one that has more synergy within the comp. The SK Prime team fight is, in fact, working here. Bot lane now getting surrounded on H2K, a little bit slow to this one. Both mid laners staying in the top lane. Smitty going for some damage. Great wave clear by Odom, by Odom though. And now they have to back off. It's Fabivan versus Watta Fox in the top lane. They're both about to be level 14s. It's Yasuo versus Twisted Fate. Breaks the shield, whatever. <laughs> There's a Zonius here too, so he could possibly, if they do get into a duel, avoid a knockup. But I don't think that's going to happen. They are staying very clear of each other. Good clear. Good job. It's pretty decent. Just the extra numbers from Twisted Fate passive just make it... It embellishes make it. Make you feel so good about that. Like, I love taking Wraith Camp with an Avarice Blade. It's only eight extra gold, but it feels so good. It's just like, oh, it's worth more. Yeah. Worth more. Yes. Exactly. Like, Look at that. 10 extra gold. 10 extra man. gold. Boom. We can add. More numbers. 4 plus 6 equals 10. <laughs> H2K just playing a little bit more passively. They've realized these moves haven't been working so much. They're trying to tread water there, get their Kog'Maw to catch up in items because Hyarn then could carry a team fight for these guys unless he gets wind walled out horribly. Febivin's ulti is back available. And actually, the more this map is stretched out, the more the split pushing keeps happening the higher H2K's chances are to find a random lopsided fight with Destiny. It's up to SKP to make sure they are grouped in the right places but not getting crushed by the wave clear of Kog'Maw TF. Good damage on Aziz right here. Down to 1,000 health. And you can see how hard it is actually for SKP to make the right choices. Split push gets TF'd. And a Siege gets TF Kog'Maw. Or Gragist, right? They can play around the objectives but they still have to be grouped to make this happen. They do have a little bit of the stronger lanes. I think that Odwamna, though, he does kind of go even now with Smitty. I think they're both in a good position. They're going to go with the split push mid with four members. Ooh, wind wall. And unbreakable. It'll be really hard to get around. Yeah, and that turret took even more damage. Febivan was randomly in the western jungle when that siege went and just didn't respect the push really coming through. Odwamna standing on some wards, and SKP keep this push going. SKP have great ward coverage all series long. Same with H2K. The fact that he's able to see these rotations means that you can take little advantages just more and more every time. This turret's two hits from dead right there. Windwall comes out. Z's looking for it. He's got to be careful, though. Again, one knockup and his life goes away. Doesn't have a Mikhail's from his support yet. Doesn't have cleanse. Stun lands. He can die. Dragon in 15 seconds. Everybody's setting up for it now because it's a little black on it. People were just warding up the jungle area. That's good for SKP, though. They never let H2K get on that side of the map. Bot and mid were the focuses. The lanes around Dragon. 
They did not let anyone into the jungle. There's not even a chance for H2K to have gotten wards there. Forbidden wants to go top right now. Trashy's on that side. They're going to have to just concede this dragon. Yep. And so H2K are getting whatever they can for the dragon. They know what's happening. They got the timer. The whole team disappeared kind of out of nowhere. It's like, okay, how far up can we push these lanes? What wards can we get down? Looks like they set up their blue buff and the route towards Baron. And a little bit in the southern jungle. But look at this for SKP. They say, hey, you guys went and warded up topside. We saw Febivin. We know blue buff came back up. So they go and push down the bottom lane with a numbers advantage. This turret's going to go down fast. Febivin is trying to get into the area in range of his ultimate. Red buff up. Nobody has it on them just yet. The small risk for SKP is they haven't bought in a long time. Yeah. They're sitting on a lot of gold right now. So that 5,000 gold lead is not as big as you would expect. And that is a bit of a risk here. The SKP can't be overconfident if they haven't bought in a while. Sitting on the gold. It's going to do nothing for you with that. the combat stats. They're trying to go straight for this. Ooh. Little bit oh, no. Fall there. There's big people fall. around. Bot the has got to be careful. There's the flash. The engage comes in. The knockup from Lulu keeps him safe. Big knockup comes by. And there's TF on the back side. We will fail there. Getting in the face of Zs, who's forced to flash away. The shields are on. Zaitan goes down. Odwamna keeps going through. They trade kills onto the enemy mid laner. There was TF falls over. Smitty not going to get caught. Two man glitter lance there. Taking huge damage from Cog. Does go down. Double kill for Hyarn. Then. And now the flash in kick is, goes for the dunk. Can't quite land it though. Slowed down by We Will Failer. But Wamna leading the team away. Very low health bars here for H2K. I don't think they can chase the kill, but again, SKP could maybe take bot lane turret with the health bars. It's two for one. And the low health bars. No ultimate came out from Watson Fox. He was a little overextended at the start of that fight. Mm -hmm. It's a good capitalization there from H2K, but Forbidden on the wrong side just got picked off by Kickers and Watson Fox. There we go, SK Prime using their health bar lead. As you mentioned, a bit of a miscommunication, you're right. Health bar went down a little too fast, a little too early. And now they get to cash in. And it'll be a lot of items coming through there. Almost gave him some purple drink. Z's just got a, an infinity edge done. He was a BF sword. What the Fox takes a huge chunk of damage here, and they just try to all in. He gets hit with the cast with the wrong direction. He gets the wild growth, but Vivid comes in, and his card gets wind walled. And then he just gets crit over and over again. He's zoning us to buy some time. Because these are two really big parts of SKP's composition focused in on him. Whereas Yarnin just had free time, all that time, to wail on all the other members of SKP. Yep. There's only two champions that threaten the back line on SKP. That's Kickus and that's Watt Fox. Otherwise, Yarnin's totally safe. Ideally, H2K has more battles like that where Fibivin just tanks the aggro and says, screw it, I'll buy time with Zonias, but you better carry this fight otherwise. More battles like that are the ones that H2K actually want. They're just hard to find. They're ticket in. But will they punch it? Top lane tier two. It's the only tier two remaining, aside from that middle one, which is very close to falling over. Yeah. They they didn't get it. That's true. Off of that strange little footsies they were playing earlier. I mean, it's good on H2K that they were there to defend in time. I didn't think they would be, but yeah. they were right there saying, hey, don't you dare. Problem is, they still need so much more time to catch up. 5,000 gold is a pretty big deficit. The fact that Hyarnan's down a full, basically a full item. Cutlass is not a very great item on Cogbots, only until you get Ruin King that it matters. TF for a fight? Fibivin's not there. They have enough people around. Just, yeah, goes to the top lane. They thought maybe, just maybe Watt the Fox is alone. They saw Kickers was nearby. Said never mind on that. Infinity Edge, just the recipe to go. If I'm SKP, you let Watt the Fox get like one more wave and then recall and fight with that item. Even if it means Rune King is done for here and then it's worth it. That's true. You want that 100% crit build coming in. Whoops. He didn't want it anyway. He, walk, he walks away. He's fine. Yeah. He wants blue wraiths anyway. Oh, buddy. Yeah. Just, just mid laners. And AD carries. Yeah, look at that. All right, well, here has got the money coming in. Hyper carry, put it on the hyper carry. All right, there's Eye Edge. There's the power spike there. Watt Fox again overkilling on attack speed. Zerk Greaves and Shiv. This time there's no Frozen Heart to be worried about. It's good for the Blade of the Rune King. The Rune King I like. Merc Treads would be so useful, though. Yeah. TF, Nami, Elise, even Gragas. A lot of reasons to get Merc Treads. Is Nami's negated? Yeah. Hmm. It's actually coded as a knockup and a stun. 
And when the stun times out, the knockup goes away. Oh, okay. He basically cleanses the knockup. Oh, he's getting teleported on. We will fail in a bad position. Bubbles going in too early. Tidal Wave comes out, but Spinny gets the kill anyway. That is a barren setup here from SKP. They were in the area. They're going to get these wards completely swept out and have the pink ward coverage for themselves. Okay, they are only missing the teleport of Smitty. Every ultimate is available here, and uh, just the, the one flash, but that's fine. Pretty Going similar for so 2 k Damage coming out. No one's around. Good zoning by Smitty. Baron Asher gets picked up 29-30. Zs just goes in. Takes explosive cast for his trouble. Spiderlings going down. One more rocket. Kill the spiders. Ulti comes out. Trashy forced to flash away. More big cooldown trades. There we go. Watch the fox. Spiderlings are gone. And because of We Will Failure being a little overextended there without the rest of his team, they're going to be punished by having the Baron taken away and that middle tier two. Oh man, there we go. Five turrets go down. H2K, to be fair, have done a very, very good job of defending these turrets, though. For how far ahead SKP was, they have not been able to siege these down. The wave clear has been great. The defense has been great. It's been, oddly enough, SKP finding picks. Yeah, it's, it's really just over. They've been resting ward control, and and they're basically playing around dragons and barons. Right, siege not working. Split pushing is not an acceptable way of winning against Twisted Fate. You just run too much risk of getting caught out. And so they're playing, you know, every six or seven minutes. Okay, Dragon Zars, right? We'll siege two lanes who are close to each other. Block back, get Dragon. We'll siege these lanes, set up Baron. When are you going to get impatient? Pick up a kill. It's really, really remarkably good play to adapt to what's on the map. As you mentioned, right? TF's not working this series. The, teammate, the teams are too good at playing around it. Their ward control's good. They're playing too smart. The exact example is right here from SK Prime. And the fact that they have a team fight comp, which is better than H2K's currently, unless yep. Kog'Maw gets really far ahead, mm -hmm. they're just playing that strength, saying, you have to come to us at Dragon. We're just going to keep taking the objectives. And they almost have a 10,000 gold lead now. SKP might be going to the finals over H2K. And they really could be. They're poised to do so right now, over 8,000 gold ahead. Very impressive stuff. You're seeing leads down the line in every single role. And the one thing that surprises me, actually, is thinking about Twitch of Fate a little bit more, because we've seen him so much, is he requires you to play passively if you're ahead against him, because he can capitalize on mistakes. But the fact is, he's got a teammate in Trashy who loves to force things, and yet we weren't seeing H2K force early leads from TF. The ultis were so scarce and so sparse. Trashy is about 3,000 gold behind Kickus. The biggest gold difference in terms of rolls. Mm -hmm. You can see he's not very tanky. He hasn't completed a second item yet. 32 minutes in the game. SK Prime, what are you guys going for right now? It's very interesting. They run across the map. They push the top wave in. Looks like they'll push mid in. They've got to be a little bit careful pushing bot because TF could show. TF and, heck, Agragas teleport as well. They've been getting picks all game. They're kind of going for more of the same. They're just going to walk straight into your hands. Deny the, deny the vision. Get the wards up. Yeah. Go for more picks. SKP playing a little bit longer game. They've got one minute left on Baron. They say, guys, the buffs came up. Take the buffs. We don't have to rush this game out. Buy up what you need. Let's close back in. So, 50 seconds on Baron. Z's coming down mid lane, of course. Smart by Febivin. He's going to push the top lane out. That's, again, not a wave that SKP can use. But it's back to bot and mid. Those are the lanes that SKP are going to use. Last How do they use them? Last Whisper completed for Z's. They want to start pushing this up. Gold advantage here is very, very big. We're about to look at the longest game of this series. First one was 30 minutes, 36 seconds. Second one, 33 minutes, 31 seconds. Windwall comes out, engage from Odwamna. Decent damage comes out, but the shields keep kick us pretty safe. Mid lane still pushing in, gonna get swept out soon. SKP still want this though. Windwall plus Rom shield. Great at protecting a back line while hitting a turret. There's a push on forward, gonna stop the cock ooze. Gonna stop the wild cards as well. A little bit of damage comes through. Z's really doesn't want to get into this one. Explosive cast gonna get dodged. Odromna tried to flash body slam as well and got nothing for it. Nothing for the flash. That's a kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. You don't use your summoner spells effectively this late in the game. I don't know if they even have five minutes on the clock to get that back up. 
They're going to keep pushing on forward, though. Slowly but surely, this turret is taking damage. They are respecting the engage. Oh, wow, Jesus. the cocoon lands. The bubble as well. There's the engage. Z is going to flash away three-man tidal wave. But it doesn't have to do anything. There's no follow-up for H2K. SK Prime, though, forced to run away. That was probably the best engagement that H2K could have asked for, but they didn't have the explosive cask available still. Could have yeah. been even worse. They could have just popped Z's into the team. It was a good chance for that one. Right now from SKP, I really feel like Zaitan needs to get Mikhail's. So they can be so... So they don't have to be so afraid of all the engage. They can keep Z's alive. They can just go in for a battle. But Zaitan wants so badly to be tanky right now. Well, good news for H2K is they stop the siege. Yep. They get them off their doorstep. They kind of reset everything. SKP has waves to push out. The Dragon and Baron are both around the same time in a minute and 30 seconds. Gonna have to go for one and sacrifice the other. Potentially. The thing is, H2K have to be so afraid of being caught out in open terrain. Mm -hmm. As soon as they take a team fight outside their base, I they lose the game. Win. Yes. They have to stay turtled in their base and get sufficient vision, but they aren't really doing that. They have vision of that right side. But unable. They, they think that they're gonna ha have uh, SKP return to the scene of the crime. And will they? So the only vision that H2K has is Southern Jungle. And whatever minion lanes they can keep pushed out. Somebody hits top lane. He is not an Ancient just yet. Only Fibivin can reach him. Mid lane being pushed by the rest of the team. What the Fox stays bot. 1-3-1 one, one push is a bit of a risk, though. It's very easy to reach one of those members as soon as they all reach the inhibitor wall. Big thing here, too, is Odwamna has his Lich Bane completed. So when he does get in contact with somebody who's squishy, he will blow them up. Yep. Zonia is going to be coming in soon for Smitty. Is not going Lich Bane, so he's not the fastest pusher himself. 20 seconds on Dragon, 25, 27 seconds on Baron. Most of the Southern Jungle Wars it. died. It, yeah, H2K looking to get some kind of control back. It might be now or never. Is there going to be the catch? Good ward over the wall. Watt the Fox on a win. They in. go in. There we go, Edwamna. The Cataclysm is there. Watt the Fox takes big damage. Here comes Brahm, and the battle has begun. Two man knockup. We will fail. They're going to die. Trashy as well. Two for zero. Sharn then isolated on the side. Watt the Fox claims that one. Three kills. Four kills. Already picked up. Now just only three, but everyone is falling over. There's the fourth as Odwamna falls. And only five have been left alive. SK Prime taken the series almost definitely as Smitty falls. Maybe they can close it out right now. I feel like they should be able to. Ignite is on. Febivin. So oh! is the Ignite. Yes, he will. Styled. Yeah. That but was good. SK Prime, they have Watta Fox and two very low health melee champions. I don't know if this is enough to close the series out, actually. It looks like they will back up off that fight. They go plus two in the battle. But that is actually, uh, and I guess they got an inhibitor as well. So they do push the lead forward, but H2K fought closely enough to stay alive. The whimsy on kick is to get him into the fight. Didn't look like the best engage, but then the Braum ulti on Trashy and We Will Failure was huge to get them out of the fight. And it also freed up Watta Fox to say, I don't need my damage on those centralized guys. I can go pick off Yarnit on the side. Just an amazing team fight engage there from SKP. And I said it. I'm going to sound like a broken record, but the team fight composition just keeps coming out on top yep. all series long. And it absolutely has. And it's been shown time and time and time again. The one upside for H2K is a bit of an inefficient build for Z's. Burke treads and now a Quicksilver Sash. He's actually going to start falling under Hyarnan in damage output in a team fight, which is maybe the way back in. Valkyrie's in. Baron taking massive damage. Odwamna still around, though. Will they go for this. this fight? They're going to try. Who's going to pick it up there? More damage comes through. There it is. Picked up by SK Prime. The battle begins. Two kills already picked up. There's the Duncan. Hyarnan's got nowhere to go. Surely going to be a dead Kog'Maw. Three kills already. Trashy falls as well. Only Febivin left alive. This now could finally be the game. Minions will flood in the mid lane. And that could just be it. The wave clear comes in. SK Prime, maybe for real this time, could take the series 2-1. Going 4 for 0 in that Baron fight, getting the Baron for themselves, being 17,000 gold up. SKP taking game 1. Yeah. Losing game 2 in a very convincing fashion off a team fight composition. They win champion select in game 3, and they play it perfectly. Except for that. Yep. <laughs> Small mistake from Z's, but the knockup in towards Febben. Gonna pop his Zonias, but the Nexus still can't turn itself invincible anymore. This game will go in an SK Prime in 39 minutes.
take game three. They take down the number one seed, the favorites of the tournament, and they are going to the finals next week. And they're going to sit there and await either NIP or Gamers 2. This rematch didn't go the way H2K thought it would. They got 2 0 no. previously. H2K won that. They start off 1 0, go 1 1, they come back. Yeah. Even though some people may be like, oh, it was a lucky game, game one. They play Champion Select really well. Yes. And H2K, though, that was a big thing for me, was their Champion Select was just not on point that game. No. You identify why they were winning and why the other team was winning. It was the team fight. The pick compositions are just not working against these guys yeah. who ward so well. Yeah. And I'm really a big fan of, honestly, when you get into a series, you come with with your plans, you do your research, you do your preparations, but you key in very quickly on what is and isn't working. You have to make those games count. You say, what worked for us? Okay, the, the slow lane, the Kog'Ma lane in game one, didn't work out. They said, well, maybe with Nami it works out this time. But again, even though they kept up in minions, they lost the turret. They lost pressure. They gave SK Prime not only the turret, they gave SK Prime the dragons as well because of a weaker bottom lane. And over and over again, objective control has meant the game time and again. The Twisted Fate picks have not worked time and again. The Rengar picks they identified didn't work. Pick a different jungler. And I thought Trashy had a decent game. But they didn't make enough adaptations. I don't think they keyed in enough to what was actually working on that day. Yeah, and you want to talk about adaptations. SKP, yep. they saw the team composition come in. Twisted Fate, Gragas, Kogma. What do you do? Build magic resistance. Yep. A lot of them bought Banshee's Veils. We saw an Aegis of the Legion into a locket of the Iron Solari for Kickus as his first item, pretty much. Yeah. And they're like, okay, then we'll tack on some armor and HP later. Because all they wanted to do was just neglect or negate a lot of the magic damage. And when I saw the composition coming out, Remember before in game two, I was saying, if they pick this composition and they pick Yasuo, what if that wasn't Yasuo? What if yeah. you had something else in that? They kind of did that to themselves here in game three for H2K. Set up a Yasuo comp, pick Twisted Fate when it was open, mm -hmm. and then it's kind of like, where's our damage? Where's our secondary type of damage? They had sure. no physical damage output aside from Kogma, who basically built attack speed and tried to use Bio Arcane Barrage as much as possible. So he wasn't at that point yet to deal yeah. a whole buttload of physical damage mm -hmm. so they really paid for that and skp they were like we're, we're they basically said we're gonna take yasuo if you leave it for us and they just got handed it it was a gift wrap to them on that one yep and you gotta wonder at what point do you try to you like preemptively counter pick as well like i would have yeah. loved to see what happened if ebbivan went for riven this game even though of course what the fox can go in and play a different champion go play lulu mid play whatever he wants the fact that you Basically say, I dare you to pick Yasuo right now. You've been trying for four picks to get Yasuo. I dare you to fight my Riven. I feel like you have a different game. You force a strategy away. You force them on a comp you know they've never tried before. And suddenly, maybe you get the game you're supposed to win there in game three. But all you got to say is, SK Prime, the better team in this series, deserved 100% going into the finals. Going to be fun to watch these guys. So after today's matchup, here's how the bracket shapes up. SK Prime advances to the finals, which will take place live on the LCS stage in Cologne, Germany, July 30th. And we'll learn their opponent when Ninjas in Pajamas take on Gamers 2 in the other semifinal match tomorrow. And before that series, there's more LCS action when Super Hot Crew takes on Gambit Gaming, and then SK Gaming takes on Rocket. Then Alliance battles the Copenhagen Wolves, and Fnatic fights Millennium. It all starts at 6 p.m. Central European Summertime, 9 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. So with that, we reach the end of our time together tonight. But before we go, I want to say thanks again to our friends at Coca-Cola. Now for myself, Zyrene, and the entire live broadcast crew, thanks for watching, good night, and GG. Flash oh! Oh! H2K's got to be real careful on this one. Nice knockout from Lulu as well. Two kills. Make that three kills. Beautiful fight, SK Prime. We will fail her getting in the face of Zs, who's forced to flash away. The shields are on. Zaitan goes down. Oduamna keeps going through. Here comes Braum, and the battle has begun. Two man knockout. We will fail her. Gonna die. Trashy as well. Two for zero. Sharn then isolated on the side. What the Fox claims that one. Two kills already picked up. There's the Duncan. Sharn has got nowhere to go. Surely gonna be a dead Kogma. Three kills already 